Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. We should have a good one on tap here today. It's the Steelers coming in at 2-7, and seven, going up against the Titans, who come in at 4-5. and five. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. Today, we've got an interesting Week 11 matchup on tap between the Tennessee Titans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's Bell. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Looking middle, and that's complete. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, up. he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he's going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. Back to throw now on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And the defense could not have written a much better script than that first drive. Pick six. The offense never got a chance to really get oiled up there, did they? But the defense, they certainly got in gear. What a big-time play and a great way for them to start. And now the offense, they've got to turn things around and figure this out because your backs are on the ground real quickly. Yeah, usually when you're starting the game getting the ball, 0-0 zero, zero is the only score you're worried about. Now the second time you get it, you're already down a touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. He'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. talented group and that's the case here and they don't mind showcasing it either those guys love to be flashy love to make big plays out in the open field they will attempt to do so in this game State, but I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him. Thought he was a big time player, great potential, but I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back, but now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll make this a second down. And there they went crossing route against his own defense. What do you think of that? Takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync... It's really effective. The starting defense for the Titans. Terrell Casey doesn't get the attention that he deserves, but he is an absolutely terrific defensive tackle, the best player on just about any team he would play on. Go. 
Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll try and run for it with Bell. They find some open field here. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. And that run was what a lot of people called explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. Second down, it's Bell. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They go play action here on first down. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And the D looking like they may blitz. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. In the slot on the right is Graham. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. They'll go to the air here on third and two. This is Bell on the dump off. But he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside, not easily covered, and then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. First down, he'll drop to throw it. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. He's not exactly had a banner start to this game. We're still in the first quarter. He's already thrown an interception, and that should have been the second one. looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. And they'll give it to him here. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top ten units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? A long drive here. Play 12 coming up for the offense. Third and 11. Five in the secondary now. Nickel look. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. And Boswell's kick is 
is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they get the field goal, but part of that was a 14-play drive to get the three. Normally, when you hold the ball that long, run that many plays, you end up in the end zone. There's a breakdown on the defense. Something happens. In this case, that didn't. A really good ball controlled by the offense. They're hoping that they can wear them down if they keep having drives like that. second level and what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play first level being the defensive front last level being the secondary but the strong safety position end up making the tackle and oftentimes we call them a hybrid combination defensive back combination linebacker we saw the linebacker make the stop Second down. Oh, the rookie nearly had the pick. Probably should have had it. Third down now. And how about this wide receiving core, Charles? Well, I was at the hotel watching a little film, and you popped your head in and said, these receivers are pretty good from what I can tell. You're exactly right. Can't wait to see them do their thing out on the field. Now Mariota. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they talked about how important the passing game was going to be against that defensive look. Good job there going to the air for the first down. It's all about preparation. It's all about planning. And then it's about execution. So put it all together in practice. Okay, this is what we think we're going to see. This is how they get to it. And then when the game comes, read it and attack it. A first down throw for Mariota. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. Ryan Shazier ran so fast at his combine that many people thought someone actually ran for him. He's a linebacker who ran sub 4-4, and he uses that speed to make plays all over the field. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. It's really simple to say that they know their identity, that they are a passing team. But one of the reasons that they're so successful, they know how to mix in the run and make sure that they keep the defense off balance and not able to just simply say, let's go get the quarterback and disrupt things. Play clock winding down. Mariota. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. It's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. And to give this time to the tailback. And he stopped immediately there. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see. Second and nine. Second down, Mariota. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take this one down to the 20-yard line. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. 
But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get him the next time. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On third and one, here's Mariota. He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. That offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super toe. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. And they'll get it up the middle. And he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. So here we go, first and ten now. Let's go! And on the ground they go with a running back. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Again, we'll see the pistol here. 
Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He's got time in the pocket. Wide open receiver complete. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Pardon me, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Yeah, the guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. All right, here we go. Green, 39! They'll look to throw here on first down. It's caught out right by Graham. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They come up in an offset eye. Now they'll send a tight end in motion left. the penalty it's Bell and he is going to lose yardage here that's going to go as a loss of two and it'll be second down Brandon that play ended so fast it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner and the tackle was there right away for a loss of yardage Steelers were able to recover, and they will indeed hold on to the ball. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. This will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. Now fourth down. And that was a nice play. He knocked it away, but obviously you want the interception in this situation. You want to take away any chance that they have any decision to make on fourth down. But things happen so quickly in the end zone, in this compressed area of the field, that you're just happy to knock it away and not allow a touchdown. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five yards with a new rule as he's taken down right at the 20-yard line. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. If you can't get that back, let's get back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again. Then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Second down, and that is incomplete. Third down at eight now. They'll come out in the pistol. On third down, Mariota. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. Those free safeties, they get to sit back there if they've got good pass rushers like this team does. Read like a book. He read it like a book and took it in for six. And if they use their eyes well and their anticipation skills, they can make big plays just as what we saw. 
a free safety's dream. Follow the football, go to it, and take it the other way. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Uses the stiff arm. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. Mariota now to throw on first down. Now they go screen. It's complete. And some room to maneuver. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. That was a beautifully executed screen pass. Let the rushers get upfield. The blocking forms in front. Lofted it to the runner. And now, not only does he have open space in front of him, he's got an escort as well, and they pick up big yardage. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Two yards to go here on third down. Mariota on third and two. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're I thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on the lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. On the exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. So second and ten here. They'll pitch it out to Bell. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Okay, work with me here. Make sure I'm clear on this one. Inside their own 10-yard line, and they run a toss play? I know it works, but ordinarily that takes a lot of hood spot to do something like that because the only thing more dangerous is trying to throw the ball in that situation and maybe taking a big loss. Bell and the Titans going to signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Returnable here from the 38. Call that 49 yards on the punt. They do get seven back on the return. And possession will change here with very little time remaining until halftime. 
Now the Titans getting set to go. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Interception, he'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. A second down throw here for Mariota. That his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. A great read and it's picked off. And a potential turning point as he'll get the football in very good field position late in this first half. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And with great field position here, chance for some points before the break. That's prime real estate. Just have to decide how they want to try and take their shot to try and put those points on the board. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So as they take it over, we step aside. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 53. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the... Okay, well, so much for the halftime report here. Can't, guy can't even finish his Snickers. We're going to get right to the third quarter. Let me spit this out. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. But they held them to a short gain on that one. And it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at them. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Eight yards to go here on second down. They come out here in the eye. Second down, Mariota. He's going to look deep down the field. And my goodness, another interception. A great read, and it's picked off. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? Let's In this go. case, a field Green goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And it'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. Third and four. Another pistol look here. Out of the 
gun now on third down. And Graham's got it over the middle. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. fake here on first down and they will not get the connection there it's incomplete offense still needing 10 yards second down four there and it's third down they threw the screen to the perimeter but to no benefit at all tackle behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage third down still 14 yards left play there a nice job defensively and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth but there's almost no doubt about the play call there on third down and long you figure they're gonna throw the football i've got to give a little credit to the offense for taking a little bit of a chance there running the draw hoping to catch them off guard but the defense was ready taking it about the 16. A good return there, call it 13 yards, and it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I'm here my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. Hey, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. Try the ground game here with the running back. Give them four on the carry there, but that only takes them back to where they started. Third and ten. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. On third down, Mariota. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They come out here in the eye, and they'll go on the ground, and they went the wrong way there, losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Stephon Tua came out of Notre Dame as another one of those really tall defensive ends, and you just wonder, would they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? I think he just gave us an answer with that tackle. 
Oh, and the defender took some liberties there with a late hit, roughing the passer. The league has done a great job of defining what is a late hit and illegal contact on a quarterback. The defenders really have to get in line. So the offense has it first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Mariota now on second down. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. They overload him that time with a safety blitz and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. And their inaugural sack of the game coming from an unlikely source. You mean it wasn't a linebacker? It wasn't a defensive end? It was somebody like you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a surprise for the offense. That's not what they normally get when they think about pressure. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. He went full-scale, loose, flexible, finding a way to catch the ball in some traffic for a key first down. Yeah, really a nice job of adjusting to the ball in the air. Not the most accurate of throws, but able to adjust and make the grab. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. Now Mario, and that is incomplete here. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down and eight. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Mariota to throw it. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Here's Randy Bullock now as he'll go for the field goal. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And Bullock will put this one through. And the deficit tram to six now at 16-10. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it over. You didn't right turn now. it over. Right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. They come up in an offset eye. 53 is the fight. 53. Detroit! Detroit! Back to throw now on second and 10. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. 
On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good, but when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Fielded at the 33. Back now in Pittsburgh. Yeah, the defense definitely showing blitz here. First down, Mariota. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area, let your quarterback hit you. Second down to the offense needing five yards. They come out here in the eye. Time running out here on the play clock. And now here's a carry hitting left. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just brought up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. It's third down, six yards to go for the offense. Throwing is Mariota. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Here's Brett Kern now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. And the play clock's running down. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. It looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go. And sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Ten yards still left on second down. Let's go! Green 39! Green 39! Looking to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he is out of bounds, getting it across the 30-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. He'll look to throw. And Graham's got it over the middle. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets them a new set of downs. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Here's Bell. And they go 
backwards here. Losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. They come out here in the eye. He'll look to throw. Blitz coming and down he goes. He'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. A screen to Bell. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Now this is going to work out well as it's out of bounds near the 13-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Simple slant route and part of a really nice hard throw by the quarterback. Nice timing between the quarterback and the receiver. They were perfectly in sync, and he put it right on him on the inside route. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid-type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Going to throw right side here, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now a timeout being called as there's an injured Titan down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And, of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. A first down throw for Mariota. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he eventually goes down, but not before reaching the 30-yard line. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. Now they'll run it on the toss. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Back 
to throw. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. It's a gain of 14 down to the 14. One of the selling points of the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they get on that play. They'll look to throw. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I got to get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. This will be caught at about the three. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? Lock. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They come out here in the eye. goal the offense knocking on the door and he gets halfway there down to the one yard line he'll get two out of that run and it's going to bring up a second and goal it is definitely hard to find space near the goal line you always want to have it and the Steelers signal for another timeout that'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play Looks to punch it in here from the one. And he is in as they have tied it late here in the final minute of the fourth quarter. And now we've got a tie game after that touchdown. And you and I both know what that means. Extra point in this situation. This little time left takes on some extra emphasis, doesn't it? It does indeed. Now inside the final minute, can they get it and hold on? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. In the slot on the right is Graham. He's back to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position. And sometimes, if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. And they're going to go soft on the corners. Back to throw. And he comes back with one complete. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. One score down, here we go. Right, 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 right. 
They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Alert, alert, two, three, 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 three. Three. He'll look to throw. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So, kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it is what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Titans, it's a win that might keep them alive in the playoff race as they're back to 500 at 5-5. Five and five. And they'll return home next week to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, for the Steelers, add another loss to the pile as they drop to 2-8 and eight now on the year. And they'll try to make amends next week as they host the Cleveland Browns.